Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're on part four of a mini series looking at ANOVA and using the FRED method for the ANOVA. So we're on the draw conclusions portion of it. So in previous videos, we talked about how to formulate the problem, which included writing out multiple definitions for mu's and different populations. Also the null and alternative. We talked about reviewing conditions and we saw that there were three ways that we had to check conditions for an ANOVA. And then in the last video, we talked about how to execute calculations. And we emphasized that you would wanna use a computing package because the formula for calculating the F test statistic is so, um, labored. So here, when we draw conclusions, it's just like we've had in previous uh, hypothesis tests. We have the option of having a p-value that is small, and then we've said that in that situation, you reject the null. Okay, so that's the first option. And the second option we've had is having a p-value that is not small. And remember that we would say in that situation, you fail to reject the null. And remember we say fail to reject instead of accept because when you do these hypothesis tests, you're doing them to see if there's evidence to go against the null, not to prove the null. So these things go together. You remember, you never blend the two lines. And so when you reject the null, remember you always say that you have sufficient evidence or you could say there's statistically significant evidence. And remember that when you fail to reject, so you're not leaving the null, you would say there is insufficient evidence. Or you also could say you do not have statistically significant evidence. So these go together. If you have a small p-value, you reject the null and you have sufficient evidence. If you have a p-value that is not small, you fail to reject, which requires you to say you have insufficient evidence. Now, always the next part of drawing conclusions, once you say what type of evidence you have, the next thing you'll state is your population or for your populations. So same here, and we're always going to state the populations because we're trying to make an inference on the population. So it makes sense that when we're all said and done doing the hypothesis test or our form of inference that we would refer to the population. So that we need, so one, two, and then the third thing that we need is for you to restate the alternative. And that's true over here as well. Remember that with these problems, you always make a decision on the null, um, but then you state how much evidence you have for the alternative. So for these alternatives, remember that the written kind of interestingly, you have the null where mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4, and the alternative is that at least one mean is different. So when you state this, you might say there's sufficient evidence to suggest freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, at least one of those mean study times differs. So not really a lot of information. Remember with these types of problems, the next thing you do if you see that there's sufficient evidence is that post hoc analysis to see where the difference is or which group does differ. For right now, if you see that there's evidence for a difference, all you can say is there's sufficient evidence to suggest that for these populations, at least one mean differs. And here you might say insufficient and so you would not do a post hoc with this, but here you would. So in future videos, we'll do an example of the ANOVA and I'll be relying heavily on the output from R. See you there.